Bosnia is a multi-ethnic country. Some people call Sarajevo European Jerusalem because more than 500 years we are living here together. Orthodox, Catholics, Jewish, Muslims. We have enough space for 10 million people in Bosnia. We can be living all together. And the main problem is the Serbians and Croats. In last 100 years, constantly they want to take our territory. It means to divide Bosnia. My colleagues, my friends, was also the Serbians and Croats. We are fight all together in Bosnian army against the Serbs on the mountains. But some of these Serbs, they are left the city and go on the mountain and start to terrorize people here. Before the war, they had big brainwashing. Propaganda was very strong. But Bosnian Muslims want to kill Serbians, want to kill Bosnian Orthodox. That was uh, three months before the war. You know, every day when you listen to uh, this, uh, this propaganda, you start to believe in that. Serbian population in Sarajevo, they are scared. They are believed them, but this is not true. This is not true. How we can attack them with, if you don't have weapon? But this is propaganda. Was there any propaganda on this side that Serbs? No, would still, you? still we have same. Do you think that there are Serbs who don't feel safe in Bosnia somewhere? I don't know. For the, maybe, can be. But what's the problem with that? In Sarajevo, before the war, was living thirty percent. Serbian population, Orthodox, Bosnian Orthodox. This is correct, not Serbian. Ja nisam bosanski srbin, ja sam srbin. Pa znate šta, rat u Bosni i Hercegovini, ja ne znam kako može neko doživjeti to stanje koje smo mi tamo preživjeli, ko nije bio tu i ko dolazi iz neke druge države i ko to zna možda iz nekih medija ili od nekih prepričavanja. Ja sam ovdje u Višegrad sam doselio 96. godine poslije rata, inače sam rođen u Pazariću kod Sarajeva. Pa znate šta, ja prvi godine poslije rata kada se počelo odlazi tamo i vamo hodat, prvi put kad sam odlazio u Sarajevo, kad sam ulazio u taj dio federacije, ja sam osjećao strašan strah. Ja nisam protiv Bosne i Hercegovine, evo, što pričam sad možda u kori Srba. Bosna i Hercegovina je moja država. U ratu sam imao jedno to loše iskustvo, u jedno vrijeme sam bio zarobljen u logoru koji je držao armija Bosne i Hercegovine, odvedan sam od kuće kao civil. I ništa tu vam je jednostavno, vi ste kod kuće, dođe bijeli kombi sa tri, četiri naoružana čovjeka, uđu u kuću, odvedu vas, to je to. Logorje, imate čeliju betonsku koja je neki 20 nekoliko od kvadrata, u njoj je 30 ljudi, nema nikakvog namještaja na betonu, ležite. Da bi se mogli noću okrenuti na drugu stranu, morate ležati na boku jer nema mjesta za sve ako legdiš na stomaku ili na leđu. U čošku je kanta koja je WC. 
hrana je bila jedan obrok dnevno, jedna snita hljeba, manja od ovog kao ovaj telefon. Imali smo nekoliko kašnike, neke tekućnije koja je bila odrana tog okusa. To smo jeli po petorica iz jedne i mogli su nas zapast tri ili četiri kašnike. Dva do tri litre vode na nas iz trideset. Gledali smo da imamo bar malo, ako neko padne unesvijest, da ga možemo umeti bar, da ga povratimo. Ako su znali za nekog da mu je neko tamo na tvoj strani, srpsko, znali su pričati, vidio sam ga snajperom, skinuo sam ga i tako što ja znam. To znači ne možete svrstati u svijet nekog ljudskog razmišljanja. Tu čovjek više nije čovjek. I to je generalno bilo u cijeloj Bosni i Hercegovini. Narod koji je ostao u tim podijeljenom tom, sad podijeljenoj Bosni i Hercegovini, na tuđoj teritoriji nije dobro prošao, obično je završio nekom logoru. Ljudi koji su me odveli silo su komšije. My mother was a refugee and my father was on the war lines and he was wounded and but they always wanted to stay positive for us. I work in Funky Tours office. We are a travel agency for the incoming tourism and we are taking our guests to know better and explore Bosnia and Herzegovina and Balkan. It's important to, for other people to know that it's not war here anymore. And we do have so many cultural and so many beautiful and natural surroundings to visit. It's really, really important and it makes me really happy to share that with other people. So. My parents are from a small place called Kamenica in near Zvornik. There's a place that were discovered uh, mass graves, the most mass graves in past years, so it was pretty dramatic. So, seeing how they struggled through those years to give us everything, yeah, it's kind of leaving a mark on, on, on us. For example, if I'm getting in a relationship with somebody who is other nationality, uh, I know that they will be like extremely hurt by that. Even though I'm not sure if that's okay or right thing to do or something like but I kind of understand their struggle and we here in Bosnia suffer not only just from PTSD but from transgenerational PTSD <laughs> Maybe part of those traumas were the faces and reactions of my parents. I was seven when war started and I was almost ten when it ended. My part of Sarajevo was between two enemy lines which were about 800 meters from each other. So shelling was pretty non-stop. First, we were very, very scared. We went to the basements. But you're not a rat. You're a, you're a human being and you have uh, dignity. My normal job is being a lawyer for the, for the telecom company. During weekends and on my vacations, I do tour for the Funky Tours. This uh, agency is founded by my friend, very good friend of mine. We went to high school together. He was the one with the, all the crazy ideas. So he's the one who succeeded. We all just became doctors, lawyers and everything else, you know. But I do it uh, very seriously because it's part of my childhood experience and part of history of my country. Part of uh, my uh, lecture on those tours uh, were also analyzing uh, crazy nationalism and uh, artificial dividing people and how it can go wrong. I'm a fortunate among children of Bosnia. I was in a besieged city, uh, in the city that uh, had uh, the longest siege in modern history. I was never wounded myself, I was not in concentration camp, and God forbid many children witnessed their mothers being raped. So tell me about your birthday. 
Oh yeah, my birthday. I was born on 11 July in 1994. So yeah, on that day we commemorate the victims of Srebrenica genocide. I actually never had a normal birthday because I couldn't celebrate it. What a day to be born. <laughs> I lost my father, my twin brother, my uncle. I'm here for them. I'm here to, you know, to tell their story, to tell the story of my survival, and to tell the story of all of those who were um, killed in July 1995 and who are now voiceless. We have to speak on their behalf. Oh! Kako ste? So let, let's go there. I... So this, uh, this is, these are the actual the offices where we are about to move back there. We simply, you know, wanted to renovate them to have better working conditions. Yeah. yeah so this is the exhibition that I authored, oral history exhibition. It's based on. 20 different topics, uh, starting with local customs, early acts of genocide, war crimes, 92, 93, Potocari, July 1995, the death march. How many people were in the column? It was more than 12,000. Nobody knows exactly, but it, it's between 12 and 15,000. But I always say more than 12,000. We're at the beginning. And on, on July 13th, there was an attack, an ambush. After the ambush, um, everyone got scattered. Just the first part managed to break away. And around three and a half thousand, up to 4,000, managed to get to the free territory on July 16th. Uh, everyone who was left behind was rounded up and were killed. What happened to me, I think it's, it needs to be recorded, it needs to be written down. You know? uh, when people die, um, the, story die, the story dies with them. And this is what maybe people, people don't understand. I dedicated my life to this memorial. So it is, I'm sure, first video exhibition on oral history ever in Bosnia, so which is it's over six and a half hours of video material with uh, subtitles in English. Yeah, I'm here. So this is the, the massacre that I'm actually uh, one of the witnesses. And why is this not working, actually? Uh -huh. Yeah, somebody forgot to plug it in. It is always difficult to um, have people to talk about these experiences. Those who, who want to talk, they usually, like me, they say that they want to give something back. Uh, they also think that it will be a sort of therapeutic for, for them. But there are also, you know, um, reasons for those who say no. For instance, you know, they don't think that it will change anything. That that. Um, some think that uh, nobody cares. Some think that you know their story would not make any difference in the world. Um, then some think that uh, psychologically, it's for, they wouldn't be able to go through the interview. Um, 
and some f some of them feel abandoned from the society. You know, um, so there is a number of reasons for them when they say no. the culture we don't speak much of feelings we don't cry much but generation of my parents in a sense never faced their own traumas I never realized how much buried memories I had in myself I had some sort of a catharsis after a year or so doing these tours I think these tours also helped me in facing maybe some of my personal traumas We have this, uh, this tendency to have a very, very dark humor, and I think that that makes us sane. You, you remember that guy when he lost his head, at least two fingers? We call him Teenage Mutant Turtle, you know, because turtles have three fingers. <laughs> you know, like that, you know. You do remember when that guy killed? Oh, I remember he was such a crazy guy. So that's, that's the way we, 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 we speak with each other. It's, it's emotional, but it's not like sense at the psychiatrist or something like that. U stvari, ja sam učestvao u snimanju par nekih emisija, baš na toj priču, trojica logoraša iz tri naroda, koji imaju dobre odnose, koji su prijatelji, ja sam jedan od njih, jel? Nas, mi smo zanimljivi zato što razgovaramo, što se družimo, što funkcionišemo i kada budemo uvažavali jedne druge, prihvatali da priznavali svakom šta mu se desilo, tada ćemo sigurno se pomiriti. Ja mislim da mi ovdje imamo neke tri nametnute priče u ovoj državi. Ja sad neću da ulazim u politiku i to, ali to je činjenica svaki ono malo djete zna da imamo tri nametnute priče i svi bi trebali da se ponašamo u skladu svoje priče. We were together during the war and then we talked and uh, we know about all details about each other and uh, during his peaceful activities I sometimes go with him and I can listen to the stories from uh, three of them, Amir, Stanislav and Janko, but honestly I don't like to talk about the war. Vrlo često se desilo da uđemo u neku salu gdje možda je prilično hladna atmosfera obzirom da znaju da su to neki logorači koji će pričati neku priču. A posle priče najčešće se dešava da ljudi imaju potrebu da priđu i da nam pruže ruku. Neki su nam nekad čak govorili da ne kažete ime, ne bi znali. Čak smo nekad pravili to da u publici pogađaju ko je Srbin, ko je Bošnjak, ko je musliman. Po tim našim pričama, ja sam vrlo često bio Bošnjak, po mišljenju publike. Posle ovog vora sam bio kao čak i vojnik Republike Srpske. Nakon što sam pisao kako se vojnik ponašao prema tebi, a posle toga si postao vojnik, da li si nikada bojao da ćeš postati kao oni? Ne, nisam se nikad bojao. Ja vrlo često znam reći da... I was never afraid to become like them. Da mi se nije svidilo kako se ponašao tamo i rekao sam još... Tamo u silu što sam rekao sebi, nikad neće biti ovakav. And I'm the witness of one situation when we were together. Stopali smo, trebali smo negdje da izdijemo. Pošto nije bilo autobusa, nisam imao svoje auto. We stopped some. I stao nam je neki kom... Nisam znao o čemu se radi. Vidio sam kad sam otvorio vrata, bio je onaj pas 
pučijak, vjerovatno dresirani, policajac u uniformi. I mi smo sjeli tu na neko prvo sjedište do rata. We sat at the first seat. Nisam uopšte obraćao pažnju šta bi se moglo. I didn't notice what could happen. I onda je taj policajac jednom rekao, a idemo pjesma, ja sam čuo iza sebe. He cannot say the story, but I know know the story. The policeman said, "Let's start singing." And behind me, there were people who started to sing our songs, Serb songs. They were prisoners, Bosnians, and he felt just like this. As soon as we went out, left the van, he started to cry. It's a really difficult situation. When uh, all the people behind you started to sing at one side, start singing, and not songs they like, but the songs they are ordered to sing. Nikada ne bio u stanju da nekom nešto loše uradi. I think we should visit each other. Having a side in 21st century is not good. I lived with my mom. She got pregnant in 1991 when those bad things started to happen. The doctors wasn't sure that I would be born. And she didn't speak much about war. Even when I had some questions in the teenage days, she didn't want to reply much. And she was like, you know, if they ask you some things, what do you think about oh, that, this or that? It's best for you because you don't know that. You don't remember those things. You were little. Don't look at the past, look at the future. When you watch Western media, or Serbs did the bad things in Bosnia. That's true. But also it's true that the other two nations did bad things in Bosnia. There is a one word, it's going in at. If uh, somebody is telling you not to go to that bench, Serbs will go to that bench definitely, because you can't tell me that I don't should do that. And when everybody says, you're guilty, what is their answer? You have three nations here living in Bosnia. How long will it take to agree if any part of the country is better, the whole country is better. And that is something that, unfortunately, I don't think is done here by people who decide about their future. They can make country better, but they won't because it's not good for them. When they have tensions, when they, they have safe words then, and they know they will succeed in some areas. Somebody asks them about other things, then they'll have a problem because they don't have answer on that. And you ask them, why is salary so low? Why so many people go to Germany? That's a huge problem in the whole country. All are going to Germany because they have better terms, whatever they do. If we all go away, who will build a country? Who will make this country better? Who will have his voice? Youngster always said, like, we don't have any perspective here. The government is really bad. And they choose to go somewhere else, which is really pity. Because I think Bosnia and Herzegovina has so much potential. Maybe that's just my opinion. But I think that people from Serbia are more open-minded and more aware of what happened than the Serbs from our entity, you know. I feel like they are, like, feeling more secure there than coming here, so. How does that make you feel, because this is your home? 
Oh, I don't want to be divided. Come on, we are all Bosnians and Herzegovs. So. Why do we need to make this separation and tension? And okay, it happened what happened. But let's, other generation that are coming, let's be united. Let's have our country, normal functioning country, because having like three different presidents, it doesn't make it easy. They can never agree on anything, like ever. You know, and we always elect the same people. We are not satisfied, but we always vote for the same people, which is like, what's going on? <laughs> to learn from. But if we focus on the past too much, then we don't have time to live in the present. And then our future won't be that good, as it could be.